live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Veritas Vision 2017. Brought to you by Veritas. Welcome back to the ARIA in Las Vegas, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. My name is Dave Vellante, I'm here with Stuart Miniman, who's my co-host for the week. Bob Swanson is here. He's the head of sales for DC Vast out of Chicago. Bob, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for having me, guys. So, well, first of all, the show, how's it going for you? We're, we've we now got enough data. It's been a, a couple of days, few days perhaps for you. What's the vibe like? What are the conversations like? Yeah, it's been a, it's been a great week. Um, this is the very tail end of the, of the event, so a little exhausted, um, but it's, it's been exciting. There's been a good buzz um, you know, at, the, uh, at the event, and um, we have a lot of our customers here, and uh, just kind of seeing the buzz and the, the pace of innovation that's, that's going on here with, with Veritas um, you know, has been exciting. Tell us more about DC Vast. You focused on IT infrastructure services, but dig a little deeper. Right, yep, so we're, uh, we're headquartered in Chicago, Illinois, and, uh, and you're right, we do um, infrastructure and, and, and cloud services. Um, so we uh, uh, you know, do support type services with a seven by 24 call center, uh, have different managed service offerings, different cloud offerings, um, you know, and certainly do um, uh, you know, consulting and, and, and project work as well. Yeah, Bob, so what does multi-cloud mean to your customers? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's only natural that if they're not there today that they're going to be multi-cloud um, you know, at, at, at some point. So, um, you know, Ver Veritas here is pretty uniquely positioned, you know, um, uh, you know, to be able to get customers, get customers there. Um, you know, it's all about um, flexibility and, and data portability. So I, I think where, um, you know, infrastructure and storage and data protection, um, you know, is sometimes not that exciting um, of, a, of a conversation. Um, now kind of changing, changing the conversation to data management because everybody needs their data, um, you know, to become uh, more productive for them, you know, it, it, it uh, you know, Change this conversation adds a little more sizzle. Okay, but you know your your primary area of focus is infrastructure services. So that mm -hmm. means you know first and foremost, every year you got to cut my you lower help me lower my cost. Right, yep. you've been hearing that I'm sure for years and help me improve my op operational efficiency. And you do that and really attack my labor problem, my IT labor problem, so I can focus on my business. Right, are those still the big overriding themes? Oh yeah, there's 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 no question. I mean, uh, you know, I think um, you know the the public cloud, um, you know, has been probably the most disruptive thing in our space, you know, since the since the internet, and um, it's making customers reevaluate, you know, all all cost and 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 really how they're you know how they're how they're doing things and and and, and different consumption and, and financial models. So. Um, the technology is cool, and we like that conversation, but it naturally brings a big you know, financial and, and, and cost savings and do more with less element to, to all the conversations. So what are the big trends that, that you're seeing in the marketplace? What are the conversations like with your customers? Yeah, you know, and you know, I'll give you an example. I think um, you know, customers have different approaches to cloud, right? Some cloud first, you know, everything's got to go. Others maybe you know, want to keep more of their, of their workloads, you know, on, on premise, and um, uh, in one customer example, um, where they said, "Hey, we want to move all non-production out to the cloud," and it was a single single cloud provider, and they got about forty percent of what they were looking to move out there, and they reached what they thought their estimated budget was going to be. So, um, at that point, you know, having that portability and having the tool sets to be able to you know move those workloads around becomes very important from a financial standpoint. Mm. So. I wonder if we can unpack those, cloud first and then the sort of guys on-prem. The motivation for cloud first, and the type of company, are they tend to be smaller companies, uh, or do you see larger companies saying, hey, we're going all in? I mean, you've seen some stories in the press, you know, large company, GE's going all to the cloud. Okay, I'm sure there's still a lot of on-prem going on there. Right. What are you seeing? Yeah, you're right. Um, you know, a lot of small businesses certainly, right? Makes sense for them. Any, any startups too, you know, are all pretty much born in the cloud now. You're not going to have too many financial backers that are going to want you know, a startup to be spending too much money on data center or buying hardware. Um, but the established large enterprises too are, are kind of all, all over the map, but there are even some of them that are taking this you know, cloud first um, approach. But 
um, you know, the, 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 the large enterprises and, the, and, and companies that have been around, you know, where it's not kind of a, a, a clean slate, naturally it's going to be, it's going to be hybrid and ultimately there's probably a lot of predictable static workloads that are, at the end of the day, going to be cheaper to run on-prem than they are out in the public cloud. Public cloud's great for the stuff that's not predictable or, 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 or you know, very, very dynamic. Um, so we're, we're, we're seeing, you know, and, and, and I, I am from Chicago, and so they always say, oh, the coasts move, you know, faster maybe than the, the Midwest, you know, does is, is, as well. But um, yeah, we're seeing varying degrees of uh, adoption and strategy. But in business, in the data center is good right now. I mean, it's kind of, the market's sort of booming. Mm -hmm. um, but if you roll back a few years, you guys must have thought, and maybe you're still thinking it, okay, see this cloud coming, like you said, it's one of the most disruptive, if not the most, the most disruptive mm -hmm. in a while. Um, and it's going, aiming right at the heart of your business, infrastructure mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. So, how have you responded to that? Uh, I mean, you must be riding the wave now of you know, data center mm -hmm. growth and investment, uh, but strategically, what are you thinking about in your firm? Yeah, I mean, there's no question, you know, we've had to, had to pivot. Um, but uh, it does create opportunity, um, and uh, you know, we do need to help our customers be able to be most cost effectively managing their workloads, right? And helping them, helping them with that. Um, so you know where there's uh, where there's challenge and change. There's um, you know there's certainly opportunity. Um, you know, and we've and and and, and we've seen it. And, yeah. You yeah. Know. So, but my understanding, you, your firm also offers managed cloud offerings. Right. Maybe you know it's been one of the things we've looked at is you know the channel. Can they get on board? Can they offer that? How is it working with the big cloud providers? And uh, you know that yeah. Let's start there. Yeah. You know um, that's a, that's a that's a good question. And you know a lot of people have a have a misperception that the cloud is kind of the the easy button. You know, um, but <laughs> at, the, at the end of the day, maybe ten years ago we thought that. <laughs> yeah, but, if you're a hoodie, uh, right? <laughs> you, you know, but I mean, people need to realize the the, the the same architecture and security considerations are 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 there as they are for you know for for on premise. Um, so it's not the easy button and you can just kind of set it and forget it. So some people that are underestimating that, you know, still need help from a, you know, from a, for, from a third party like ourselves to be able to help them, you know, manage it. Yeah, could you speak about kind of the maturation of your support services? Yeah, um, you know, we, uh, we started doing a lot of um, hardware support years ago when the business was, uh, was founded in, uh, in 1989. And at that time it was a lot of um, Unix-based engineering workstations and, um, uh, kind of morphed into you know servers and, and storage and other data center equipment, and then started doing a lot more software support, which you know all can be delivered remotely for the most part. Um, you know from time to time you may need uh, you know may need on site for something, but um, so that kind of changes the logistical model. And then now with the you know with the cloud as well, we've just kind of evolved um, you know in that direction. And how about the Veritas you know relationship? Uh, what's that been like? Uh, you know the Symantec you know sale. Uh, any comments on, on how that's evolved and where do you see it going? Yeah, um, we've been a long time Veritas partner. Um, and really, the reason um, why we first got started with them was because they were relatively platform agnostic and supported and endorsed you know, heterogeneity. And you know, in, the, in the old you know, foundation suite days, which is now their InfoScale product, it's obviously had some name changes. You know, it didn't matter what operating system, didn't matter which array vendor you know you you, you used um, and uh, you know it's good to have friends in the industry and alliances but there's also some benefit of staying relatively agnostic like Veritas has and that message resonates now more than more than ever with 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 all the the, the different cloud providers out there and um, uh, you know just being able to be interoperable with a lot of different technologies and yep. Bob what, what's your customers reaction been to all, all the announcements that Veritas has been making here yeah yeah everyone's everyone's excited now it's, it's getting it's getting the you know getting the word out you know and um, uh, I, I mentioned pace of innovation earlier you know and it seems to have you know gone from 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 zero to a hundred you know really really fast so um, that's exciting it, it, it shows Commitment, I think, from the, the new executive leadership team at, at Veritas and, and, and their backers at Carlisle as well. So, um, you, you know, I, I, think it's a, I think it's an exciting time for Veritas and for us as a, as a partner as well and, and our customers. And, and, and any things, you know, things you want to see out of those guys? I mean, from your perspective, from the partner standpoint, the voice of the customer, what's on their to do list? Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, I mean, it's just, you know, the, the, the concept of, of, of data management looking at holistically, you know, is. Um, 
uh, you know, is, is, is important. Um, you know, after people and intellectual property, I mean, data is, you know, the most, val the most valuable asset, you know, a company has, and a lot of that intellectual property resides in the form of, uh, you know, in the form of data, um, you know, as well. So, um, it's a, it's a, it's an exciting place to, to, to be as we kind of see, see the industry shift. Cubs or White Sox? Cubbies. All right, well congratulations yeah. on that. Yeah, yeah, it's been a- uh, Really, uh, really Cubbies, not just White Sox, uh, okay, Cubbies want it? No. Cubbies all Hardcore the way. Hardcore Cubbies fan. In a diehard, absolutely, yeah. Well, you're welcome for Theo Epstein. We, we gave him, you know, we gave Theo, and, and Lester, you know, you and know, Lackey. Theo, <laughs> Theo seems, to, seems to have the Midas touch, you know, and, and, and it's interesting too, you know, you can use sports analogies for a lot of things, and Theo's a guy that was a little disrupted by using data and analytics in his approach to, you know, managing a baseball team, so. Right, right, so, yeah. well good, that's great. We, it was exciting World Series last year, hopefully it can be as exciting again. Must have been insane in Chicago. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, I'm getting ready for another run this year, hopefully. Excellent, well Bob, <laughs> thanks very much for coming on theCUBE, really thanks, appreciate it. Thanks again, gentlemen. You're welcome, all right, keep it right there, buddy. We'll be back to wrap up Vision 2017. This is theCUBE.